In this video, we will be performing a battery replacement for the Haas CSMD simulator. Upon initial startup, we see a low battery voltage indicator on the bottom of the display screen. Once our system loads, we can see that there is an error 124 low battery. This is what we're going to fix in this video. I'm going to power down my system and locate our Phillips head screws on the back of the unit. With a Phillips head screwdriver, we can remove those screws. After the Phillips head screws have been removed from the back, we need to locate the four security Torx screws on the front of our unit. Using our security Torx driver, we can remove those screws. Once all of the screws have been removed, we can lift the casing off. If we take a look inside of our unit, we can see the main circuit board, and we can also see that the battery is located in the bottom left-hand corner of that circuit board. The two areas that we're going to be focused on in this video is the location of the battery and the location of the P1 jumper, which will allow us to put a temporary battery on to retain the memory in the system while we change out the existing battery. The temporary battery that I'm using was purchased from batteryspecialists.com. The code is Panasonic 32-1010. It is a three volt lithium battery with jumpers that will connect up with our circuit board. Prior to beginning any work, you will want to ground yourself so that you do not cause any type of electric shock to any of the components. I'm first going to install the temporary battery onto the jumper on my circuit board. And for the purpose of this video, I went ahead and powered on my system with that temporary battery to show you that there is no longer a low battery voltage indicator showing on the display screen. This tells me that the system will maintain battery power, retain all of my files, and allow me to change out the existing battery. I'm going to use diagonal cutters to cut the existing zip tie If we take a look at both sides of the battery, we will notice that the battery is soldered onto the circuit board at three points. We need to be able to get to the back of the circuit board so that we can desolder the battery, remove the existing one, and replace it with our new components. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, I'm going to remove the Phillips head screws that are located in the corners of the circuit board. Once the screws have been removed, we can gently maneuver the circuit board so we can get to the back of it. On the reverse side of the board where the battery is, we will see three soldered in contacts and two additional optional solder points. To remove this battery, we first must desolder the existing solder leads using desoldering wick and a soldering iron. Once most of the solder has been removed, we can heat up the leads and slowly work the battery loose. I like to then come back and clean up any excess solder. And when finished 
we should have three very distinct new hole locations where the previous battery was. For this repair, we will be replacing the existing soldered in battery with a battery holder and a Streamlight CR123A battery so that in the future when the battery voltage becomes low it is very easy to replace the battery. On the front side of our board we will place our battery holder in the location of the two additional solder points and press that in place. Flipping to the back of our board, we can see where the two leads come through the additional holes in our circuit board at our battery location. Next, we're going to apply just a little bit of solder to each of these leads so that we have a good tight connection that will not come out. After that, we can reposition our board, shifting our attention over to the new battery holder. I like to wiggle it slightly just to make sure the connection feels secure. We can install our new battery and then remove our temporary battery. Because this is a simulator and it does get transported from location to location, I'm going to go ahead and put a new zip tie around the battery just to make sure if it gets bumped when someone's putting it in their vehicle, the battery's not going to pop out. And tighten down the screws that hold our board in place. Prior to replacing the back cover, I'm going to power on our system and look for any errors. Right away I see that there is no low battery voltage indicator which is a good sign. However I am getting an error 475 clock not set. So we're going to go through and set the clock for this system. To do this I'm going to press current commands page down until my clock screen appears. I'm going to type in 08-29-2015 enter to set the date, the time 10 colon 52 enter and the time has been set. Now I'm going to cycle the machine off and then back on and see if we still get that error. And when it loads, I'm back to where I was prior to having switched out the battery. On this particular simulator, everything looks to be pretty good. And the last thing to do is reinstall the cover.